Of the many honors that come with the presidency of the OPC, and I can tell you there are many, I sign checks, I do take the minutes at meetings sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I also, I have the great privilege of bestowing the President's Award. Tonight, we honor veteran AP foreign correspondent, Kathy Gannon. In 2014, <laughs> In 2014, Kathy was grievously injured covering the war in Afghanistan. After multiple surgeries, she just told me she's here for her 16th tonight, uh, this week. She continues to report from the front lines in Afghanistan. So for courage under fire and a deep commitment to bringing light to dark places, I am very honored to present the winner of the President's Award, Kathy Gannon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Oops, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, it's beyond humbling to be standing up here looking out at such an incredible collection of talent. I feel proud and I feel awed and I feel so very grateful just to be counted among you. For me, it's an honor to be a, a journalist. It's a particular honor to be an Associated Press journalist. From my AP colleagues, I have found kindness, I have found empathy, I have found a whole organization on which to lean on when I needed it most. And last night we were together at a dinner that our president, Gary Pruitt, had organized and I was just so inspired by the new generation of journalists. I listened as one person spoke of his gratitude to those who shared their stories, and truly my heart skipped a beat, because for me, that's the essence of who we are and what we do. That is why I love this job, because it allows me to give a voice to those who struggle to be heard. Our profession has always been much maligned, but even more so of late, targeted for insult and abuse by the powerful and the wannabe powerful. But I feel that we have risen to the occasion. In a way, I feel it has inspired us to dig deeper, look closer, and reconnect with the real reason why we chose this profession. For the most part, we have taken the attacks in stride, put our heads down, and lived our belief that we are not the story, but the storyteller. I feel inspired by the journalism we are doing, what we reveal, and the stories we tell. We have revealed what the powerful have sought to hide, whether it is the horrors suffered by the Rohingya Muslims driven from their homes, or Yemenis tortured in a network of secret prisons, or women killed in the name of honor, and those who would kill them and of women assaulted by powerful men who thought their power alone entitled them and guaranteed them silence. But what we also do when we tell these stories is we reveal the real awe-inspiring courage of those who chose to speak out, who live with chaos and tragedy and soldier on because they have to. What I worried most about when I returned to work after the shooting was that I would look at people differently, that fear would cloud my perception, and that the real joy that I had always felt going out into the field would be replaced by fear. But if anything, I feel even stronger than ever that what we do is a privilege. I was in Kabul a couple of weeks ago, and I was sitting on the floor in the home of a mother who lost her son in an explosion and I watched her kiss and kiss over and over the picture of her lost child, and I saw in her real courage, the courage to face life without her child, and to know her other children risk dying each time they step outside the door. I think often of something a Pakistani activist and woman, Sabine Mahmood, who was shot and killed 
three years ago in Karachi said, fear is just a line inside your head. You choose on what side of the line you want to be. I've overstepped my time limit, <laughs> but I promised a friend of mine, Kieran Nazish, that I would give a shout out <laughs> to the Coalition for Women in Journalism, an organization she co-founded to give women journalists, talented, smart women, in countries like Pakistan and Mexico and Turkey and elsewhere, an organization they can turn to for support, guidance and mentoring as they navigate often difficult terrain. And finally, I want to pay tribute to all the journalists and friends we have lost doing this job. A job they loved and also I want to say thank you to our families who suffer for the risks we take. And to my husband, I say a very special thank you. And thank you, thank you to the OPC for such a tremendous honor. I am just so grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't run away. So as I... As I present the award to uh, Kathy, I'd just like to read the award certificate to you because I think it pretty much sums it all up. In recognition of her bravery under fire, her relentless determination to shed light on some of the most remote corners of earth, her courage in speaking truth to power, her mission of giving voice to women and others in need, her impeccable ethical standards, her, mentora her mentoring of generations of journalists, her sparkling writing, her unflagging good humor. <laughs> She's a clown. <laughs> we present the President's Award of the Overseas Press Club to Kathy Gannon. Thank you, Your award, Madam. <laughs>